Hello, I'm Ryan Chan, CEO and founder of Upkeep. Welcome to our video series, where we help you revolutionize your maintenance and reliability strategies. Today, we're going to discuss the intriguing concept of maintenance versus reliability. We'll guide you through understanding failure modes, organizing assets, and creating effective mitigation plans. By the end of this video, you'll be equipped with seven steps to better manage your assets. Let's dive into the second phase of our journey on how maintenance will revolutionize the world. Maintenance versus reliability. Our first step here is to understand failure modes. The failure mode and effects analysis, or FMEA, is a great tool to help us recognize and evaluate potential failures of an item or process and the effects of that failure. It also helps us identify actions that could eliminate or reduce the chance of the potential failure occurring. The performance of an asset is tied to its current ability to meet present and future demands. Assets can fail in four major ways, which we refer to as primary failure modes. These are physical mortality, level of service, capacity, and financial efficiency. Understanding these failure modes can help us determine the most appropriate investment strategies for the asset. Now, let's move on to step two. Here, we need to organize our assets and brainstorm failure modes using the template provided. Think about anything that could potentially go wrong. For example, physical mortality could involve asset deterioration, which reduces performance below an acceptable level. This deterioration can be caused by factors such as age, usage, operational stresses, or acts of nature. Once we have our failure modes, it's time for step three, rating the likelihood of occurrence of each failure mode. We use a rubric to do this, ranging from extremely high with a failure rate of less than 5 FPMH to remote with a failure rate of less than 0.2 FIT. In step four, we rate the severity of each failure mode for our assets. This also uses a rubric, ranging from extremely high which involves serious injury or loss of life, to remote, which involves minor or no loss of downtime. Step five involves assigning a priority number to each asset. This is done by multiplying your severity rating by your likelihood of occurrence rating. This gives us clear priority numbers, which can be added to our template. Next, in step six, we need to understand mitigation by risk priority. We reorganize our template so that we are now viewing our assets from most important to least. Now, we brainstorm a plan of actions or mitigations we can take to avoid failure in the first place. For example, if an HVAC air filtration system could potentially fail due to outside air filtration blockage, our mitigation plan might include a duplicate outside air filtration system and a predictive fouling rate. And finally, step seven, revisit your plan every quarter. This is crucial as it allows us to constantly reassess and adjust our plans as necessary, ensuring we are always prepared for potential failures and have the best strategies in place to deal with them. Thank you for watching this video. We've covered the seven steps to better manage your assets, from understanding failure modes to creating effective mitigation plans. If you found this content valuable, please subscribe to our channel and visit our website at upkeep.com for more resources. Remember, the key to successful asset management is regular review and adjustment of your strategies. Stay tuned for more tips and strategies on how maintenance will revolutionize the world.